Welcome to the Manassas Regional Airport's Movement Training Course. The purpose of this course is to provide vehicle operators, pedestrians, and anyone taxiing or towing aircraft with the level of training necessary to operate safely on the airfield. Individuals requiring movement area access must be properly trained in accordance with the airport's rules and regulations. Access to the movement area requires authorization from airport operations and may be revoked at any time. The Manassas Regional Airport is a general aviation airport and a designated reliever airport for the Washington, D.C. metro area. The airport is home to a variety of operations, flight schools, maintenance stations, charter companies, research and development firms, and full-service fixed-based operators. General aviation airports like Manassas do not offer any scheduled airline service. Movement areas are designed for the movement of aircraft under the guidance of air traffic control. To enter the movement area, you must have permission from air traffic control. An example of movement areas include runways, taxiways, safety areas, and run-up blocks. Please note all run-up blocks, except for the runway 16 left run-up block, are in the movement area. The airport has two runways, 16 left 34 right and 16 right 34 left. Runway 16 left 34 right is the main runway, located on the east side of the airport. It is a precision runway that is 6,200 feet long and 100 feet wide. Runway 16 right 34 left is a secondary runway located on the west side of the airport. It is a non-precision runway that is 3,715 feet long by 75 feet wide. The Runway Safety Area, or RSA, is a defined surface surrounding the runway prepared for reducing the risk of damage to airplanes in the event of an undershoot, overshoot, or excursion from the runway. No objects, including people and vehicles, should be permitted in the RSA when an aircraft is using the runway. The RSA has various dimensions depending on the runway category. The dimensions of the RSA for runway 16 left 34 right is 8,200 feet by 500 feet. The RSA for runway 16 right 34 left is 4,300 feet by 400 feet. Runway 16 right 34 left is considered a secondary runway for smaller aircraft, making its safety area smaller. If you are operating in the RSA of a runway, you are still in the runway environment. You must have permission from air traffic control to operate or access these safety areas. There are five vehicle access roads located around the airport. Interior Service Road, Mauser Road, Glide Slope Road, Localizer Road, Miles F Road. Utilize these road names when contacting air traffic control. Refrain from using any other term or phrasing. The interior service road is located on the north end of the airfield. It can be accessed through gate EV13 located off James Payne Court or from the northwest apron. This road is primarily used for fuel trucks to transition around the airfield and is located outside of the movement area. The Mauser Road, Glide Slope Road, Localizer Road, and Mals F Road are primarily used by the FAA and airport operations to access navigation aids. All of these roads except for the interior service road exist completely or partially within the movement area of the airport. Access roads are for authorized personnel only. Each of these roads will have a stop sign located at the outer limits of the RSA and indicate you are approaching the movement area. If you see this stop sign, you are required to contact air traffic control before proceeding. The dividing line between a movement non-movement area is represented by a single solid line along with single dashed yellow lines. When you are positioned on the solid line of the marking, or the non-movement area, you must have permission from air traffic control in order to proceed. If you find yourself on the other side of this marking, proceed through the dashes. Remember, stop at the solid, move through the dashes. If you are positioned on this marking, you have already entered the movement area. Taxiway markings are a single yellow solid line and have blue lights. 
which help differentiate them from runways. Runways have white markings and white lights. Additional markings you may see are center line markings, edge markings, threshold markings, or aim point markings, typically positioned 1,000 feet down a runway. Markings may have black backgrounds used to enhance these markings. Hold position markings divide the taxiway from the runway boundary. They are represented by double solid yellow lines with two dashed lines. Hold position markings are always paired with a runway holding position sign, indicating the runway you are holding at and signifying the outer limits of the runway safety area or RSA. You must always have permission from air traffic control prior to crossing the hold position line from the solid line side. Remember, move through the dashes, stop at the solids. If you are positioned on this marking, you have entered the runway environment and RSA. The next few examples will cover some signs that you may see on the airfield and what they mean. This hold position sign is located at the hold position marking for runway 34 right 16 left and taxiway Bravo 2. You will need clearance from air traffic control in order to proceed onto the runway. This ILS sign denotes the limits for the ILS critical area. Aircrafts, vehicles, persons, or physical obstructions are not authorized in this area when instructed by air traffic control. You may be asked to hold prior to this sign and markings or to proceed past it. Never stop on this marking as it may interfere with navigational aids. This sign indicates that you are approaching the outer limits of the runway safety area and will be exiting on to Taxiway Bravo. You have to proceed past this sign in order to be fully clear of the runway and the RSA. This sign indicates that you are located on Taxi Lane Zulu. Taxiway Delta is ahead and will be a left turn. This sign indicates that you are positioned on Taxi Lane Charlie and Taxiway Bravo is ahead and also to your left. Vehicles authorized to operate on the movement area must be equipped and maintain in generally sound mechanical condition. All headlights, tail lights, turn signals, brake lights, and hazard lights must be fully operational. Vehicles including support vehicles must be equipped with a flashing beacon. Beacons must be visible from all directions, amber or yellow in color, and be positioned at the highest point on the vehicle. They must have a flash rate of 75 flashes per minute. Vehicles operating on the movement area must also be marked accordingly. Company logos or lettering placed on the side of a vehicle must be a minimum of 16 inches tall and reflective. Roof lettering must be 24 inches and also be reflective. Golf cart and tug operators must make every effort to meet these marking requirements. Sizing may be reduced and roof lettering may be optional. Contact airport operations for additional guidance. Vehicles must be equipped with a two-way capable VHF radio in order to communicate with air traffic control. When in communications with air traffic control, reference your company assigned call sign per the airport's letter of agreement. If you are unsure of your call sign, please contact your employer or airport operations at 703-361-5488. Vehicles not equipped to operate on the movement area are not authorized. If you require movement area access, vehicles can be escorted by an individual who is trained and equipped to operate on the movement areas. Individuals authorized to operate on the movement area must be familiar with the airfield layout and airfield communications. This section will provide an overview of radio communications and run through several scenarios to introduce proper phraseology. Your employer is responsible for ensuring you are fully trained in radio communications. Know where you are and where you are going. Use a combination of the airfield markings, signage, and the airfield diagram to familiarize yourself with your location. Think about what you are going to say before transmitting. It may be helpful to run through your communication before you make the initial call on the radio. Speak in a clear and concise manner and use your approved identifier or aircraft tail number. Vehicle identifiers are assigned by operator name plus a number. 
If you are unsure of your call sign, contact your employer or airport operations before communicating. Use proper aviation terminology and phraseology. Study this material to ensure that you know it completely. Here are some commonly used terms. Acknowledge. Let me know that you have received and understood this message. Advise intentions. Tell me what you plan to do. Affirmative. Yes. Confirm. My understanding of your transmission is... Is that correct? Correction. An error has been made in the transmission and the correct version follows. Final. Commonly used to mean that an aircraft is on the final approach course or is aligned with a landing area. Go ahead. Proceed with your message, not to be used for any other purpose. Hold or hold position. Stay in place where you are currently located. Hold short of. Proceed to, but hold short of a specific point and maintain appropriate distance to avoid interfering with other traffic. With respect to runways, always stop at the runway holding position marking unless otherwise directed by air traffic control. A readback confirmation to air traffic control is required any time a hold short instruction is given. Negative. No, permission not granted, that is not correct. Proceed. You are authorized to begin or continue moving. Read back. Repeat my message back to me. Roger. I have received your last transmission, not to be used to answer a question requiring a yes or no response. Say again. Repeat what you just said. Stand by. Wait for further information as in stand by for clearance. Unable indicates inability to comply with a specific instruction, request, or clearance. Verify. Request confirmation of information. Without delay. Follow instructions expeditiously, specifically, and safely. Will cope. I have received your message, understand it, and will comply. Manassas Tower is open from 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. local. All vehicles and personnel needing access to the movement area must get authorization from air traffic control. If you are operating on a non-movement area, you do not need air traffic control clearance to operate. When communicating with air traffic control, always start and stop your initial transmission by using Manassas Ground and your assigned call sign. This indicates to air traffic control that you are looking for a request, but prevents a long initial transmission. For example, Manassas Ground, Airport 5. Airport 5, Manassas Ground. When providing a request, use this basic phrasing structure. 1. Who are you calling? Manassas Ground. 2. Who you are? Airport 5. 3. Where you are? Is holding short of Bravo and Taxi Line Echo? 4. What are your intentions? I would like to proceed south from Bravo to the localizer road. After providing a transmission, you will be given instructions by air traffic control. Copy your clearance. Be sure to review your assigned route as air traffic control may have assigned something different than what you requested. Don't assume and read back all assigned instructions. Example. Manassas Ground, Airport 5. Airport 5, Manassas Ground. Airport 5 is holding short of Bravo and Taxi Line Echo. I would like to proceed south on Bravo to the Localizer Road. Airport 5, proceed south on Bravo to Localizer Road. Proceeding south on Bravo to the Localizer Road, Airport 5. If you do not understand a transmission or the tower directs you to do something that you believe is unsafe, stop, hold your position and ask the tower to repeat their last transmission or ask for clarification before proceeding. If the controller cannot understand your request, you may be asked for clarification before receiving authorization. When issued a clearance to cross a runway, air traffic control will only issue instructions to cross a single runway at a time. Instructions to cross multiple runways are not issued. An aircraft or vehicle must have crossed and cleared the previous runway before another crossing instruction is issued. This applies to both inactive or closed runways. 
Always clear yourself of any runway, taxiway, or movement area. Airport 5, cross runway 3, 4, right at Bravo 3 to taxiway Kilo. Crossing runway 3, 4, right at Bravo 3 to taxiway Kilo. Airport 5 is clear of runway 3, 4, right at Kilo. Airport 5, cross 1, 6, left, Bravo to the east apron. Crossing runway 1, 6, left, Bravo to the east apron. Airport 5 is clear of 1, 6, left at Bravo. Roger. Airport 5 is clear of Bravo on the east apron. Roger. You should try to exit the movement area without crossing any runways. Many areas of the airfield give you access to perimeter and public roads. When you are issued a hold short instruction, you must comply with the instructions and read back hold short in your transmission. This is a mandatory instruction. If you do not read back the instructions or read back the wrong runway, air traffic control will correct you and request that you provide a read back. Airport 5, hold short runway 34 right at Kilo. Holding short runway 34 right at Kilo, Airport 5. If at any time you need to exit your vehicle or aircraft while on the movement area, you must contact air traffic control prior to exiting. Notify them of your location and intentions. They may either approve or deny your request. While operating outside of the vehicle or aircraft, you must maintain two-way radio communications at all times. This can be done through a handheld radio or an external speaker mounted in the vehicle. Ensure your radio is set to an audible level so you can monitor air traffic control transmissions. This scenario will take you through typical communications with air traffic control. In this example, the operator needs to perform a compass calibration on an aircraft in the runway 34 left run up block. Manassas ground, call sign is on taxi lane echo, holding short of Bravo. I would like to taxi to the runway 34 left run up block for maintenance call sign manassas ground taxi to the three four left run up block via bravo bravo three kilo hold short of runway three four right taxing to three four left run up block via bravo bravo three kilo hold short of runway three four right call sign manassas ground call sign is holding short of three four right at bravo three Call sign, cross 34 right to Kilo, hold short of runway 34 left. Crossing 34 right to Kilo, hold short of runway 34 left, call sign. Call sign is clear of 34 right at Kilo. Roger. Call sign is holding short of 34 left at Kilo. Call sign, cross 34 left at Kilo. Crossing 34 left at Kilo. Call sign. Call sign is clear of 34 left at Alpha 5. Call sign, Roger. You can taxi to the 34 left run up block via Alpha. Taxi to the 34 left run up block via Alpha. Call sign. Vehicle communications with air traffic control are on Manassas Ground 121.8. Should you lose radio communication, you may have to respond to light gun signals. Always clear a runway in the event of a radio failure. 1. Turn your vehicle towards the tower and flash your headlights. 2. Wait for the controller to give you a light gun signal. 3. Be patient. The controller may not immediately see you and it may take a few minutes. Flash your lights again. 4. If still waiting, try a different radio frequency or call from a cell phone. Store the tower phone number in your cell phone for emergencies. The tower can be reached at 703-361-1601. 5. The tower will respond with instructions using light gun signals. 6. After receiving a light gun signal, acknowledge the instructions by flashing your headlights. Manassas Tower is closed from 10.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. 
When the tower is closed, Manassas becomes a non-towered airport. Aircraft can continue to arrive and depart the airspace through coordination with Potomac approach. Vehicle operators should remain extra vigilant and visible when operating on the movement areas. Operators must always self-announce their position on the common traffic advisory frequency, 133.10. Aircraft are not required to communicate or announce their position at non-towered airports. In the event of an incident, vehicle operators should be on record for reporting their movement. When operating at a non-towered airport, vehicle operators should repeat their transmission when their situation or position changes. If there are no changes, transmission should be repeated every 10 minutes. Transmission should be short and confined to safety-related matters. When self-announcing your position, always start and stop your transmission by using Manassas traffic and Manassas. At night, radio transmissions can travel longer distances, so there might be communication coming through from another airport. It is important that operators identify which airport they are transmitting from. Use this basic phrasing structure. 1. Who are you calling? Manassas traffic. 2. Who you are? Airport 5 vehicle. 3. Where you are is on taxiway Charlie. 4. What are your intentions? And we'll be operating on taxiway Bravo southbound Manassas. When at a non-towered airport, if at any time you need to exit your vehicle or aircraft while on the movement area, you must self-announce your intentions on the CTAF. While operating outside of the vehicle or aircraft, you must maintain two-way radio communication at all times. This can be done through a handheld radio or an external speaker mounted in the vehicle. Ensure your radio is set to an audible level so you can monitor the CTAP for any transmissions. This scenario will take you through typical communications at a non-towered airport. In this example, an aircraft has a flat tire on the taxiway. The operator needs to get their tug out to the aircraft to recover it. Manassas traffic. Call sign, tug is on the southwest apron, will be proceeding south on taxiway Alpha, Manassas. Manassas traffic, call sign, tug will be crossing runway 34 left at Alpha 5 to taxiway Kilo, Manassas. Manassas traffic, call sign, tug is clear of runway 34 left on Kilo, Manassas. Manassas traffic, call sign, Tug is operating on taxiway Kilo, Manassas. Whether operating in towered or non-towered operations, vehicle operators may hear aircraft announce their position using segments of their traffic pattern. Traffic patterns are usually rectangular in shape. The segments of the pattern are named upwind, crosswind, downwind, base, final. Note that pilots use the following patterns at the Manassas Regional Airport. 1-6 left, left pattern. 1-6 right, right pattern. 3-4 right, right pattern. 3-4 left, left pattern. Vehicle operators need to be familiar with the airfield layout and any changes that may affect their access on the movement areas. If there are closures or construction, know another way to get where you are going. Do not assume you have clearance to proceed along the route you would like to take. You may be given a clearance different from what you have requested. Know which runway is the active runway and use the correct terminology. During tower operations, clearance and crossings are based on which runways are in use. Know the current weather conditions. Is there going to be low visibility? Understand that air traffic control may not be able to see you from their location. Will there be precipitation? Be extra cautious around aircraft and drive slower than normal. Vehicle pedestrian deviations are defined as a pedestrian or vehicle entering any portion of the airport movement areas without authorization from air traffic control. Vehicle pedestrian deviations are divided into two categories, runway incursions and surface incidents. Runway incursions are defined as any occurrence at an aerodrome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. Runways are meant for aircraft use, 
never drive a vehicle on it unless you are properly trained and authorized to do so. Surface incidents are defined as unauthorized or unapproved movement within the designated movement area, excluding runway incursions, or an occurrence in that same area associated with the operation of an aircraft that affects or could affect the safety of flight. Any individual involved in a runway incursion or a surface incident will receive a notice of violation and may result in a loss of gate card access and movement area authorization. Remedial ground vehicle training will be mandatory in order to reinstate these privileges. Drive safely. Be aware of your surroundings. This concludes the movement area training course. Please proceed to the movement driver training test.